Hey everyone, Mike here. Are you tired of videos like this? Today, we will be talking about... Of course you are, they're crazy boring. But the good news is, you got me. I'm an actual engineer. I'm legit. I got street cred. I can prove it. I've got Cat5 paraphernalia in my office. I keep boxes of cables. I actually just cleaned up my desk, which was filled with energy drinks and bags of chips. So you know I'm the real deal. But seriously, I really felt like the engineering space is filled with videos that are super, super dry and boring, and I am not like that at all. So today we will learn about... But anyway, on to the good stuff today. So we're gonna talk about NSXT versus NSXV. This is a topic that I personally found really confusing when I kind of got into the space. I do work for today. I'm a senior systems engineer, blah, 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 blah. You know the rest. I've spent a lot of time in the networking space. I have two CCIEs and I worked very hard at them. I paid the power bill to have huge labs at home. Now my lab is much smaller and all virtualized. But today we're gonna talk about NSXT and NSXV. We, I wanna talk about this because there's a lot of confusion around the two. A lot of people think that NSXT is just kind of a newer upgrade of NSXV, which isn't the case at all. Actually, they were made as two separate products completely uh, from scratch. So they have nothing in common from a code standpoint. However, conceptually, they do operate pretty much the same in my opinion. That said, there's a lot of compelling reasons why you would switch between the two. So to start with reason number one, with NSXV, you were tied to vSphere. You had a one-to-one -one mapping. If you have one vCenter here, you have one NSX manager here, they're paired up. Like Brangelina? Brad and Angelina. That's it. Which worked fine for most cases. It gave you all the benefits of software-defined networking. You could do micro-segmentation. You could stretch networks. You could do some things like that. That was pretty cool. The downside was, what if you had more than one vCenter? Which, honestly, most customers do. So you kind of got backed into a corner where you had to have multiple NSX managers, which made things crazy messy in my opinion. Enter NSXT. NSXT is decoupled from all of that. So now we can have five vCenters, eight vCenters, however many you want. It can be mapped over to one NSXT manager, and now you can do all of your networking and security across vCenters. Also, there's this thing called the public cloud. You might have heard something about it. AWS, Azure, VMC on AWS, Azure VMware Solutions, ring a bell? Well, with NSXT, you can actually secure workloads in those environments as well as on-prem. So let me give you an example. You're running AWS and you want to secure workloads. You have a three-tier application. Maybe you have the DB and app tier on-prem, but you have the web tier split, maybe even between AWS and Azure. And I'm not talking about just the VMware stack. I'm talking about native cloud, EC2 instances. So I'm running the web tier up in AWS. I can actually pull that inventory into NSXT with the same manager that I'm talking about that I'm about to show you in a minute. I can secure all of that. I can network all of that just like it was on-prem. Another area where they're completely different is the multi-site story. With NSXV, it was kind of an afterthought. It was just kind of, you could go across sites, you could stretch your, your networks if you had your vCenter and you could do cross vCenter stuff. and. Um, it works and it's fine. And if you're already doing it, you already know what I'm talking about. But if you're not doing it, there's no reason to be looking at NSXV because NSXT, it brought a whole new host of new enhancements to the multi-site story. With NSXT 3.0, which just went GA, I don't have a watch on. It just went GA recently. It included the ability to do what we call federation. And Federation allows you to basically stretch your networks across sites, do active-active, do some really exciting stuff, share security policy across sites, and it's all very simply laid out and just really cool. Another piece to this is that NSXT was really built for scale, whereas NSXV was really not from the start. So what do I mean by scale? Everything in NSXT was really architected from the ground up to be scalable. NSXV did its job, and it did its job very well at the time. But the world is changing, applications are changing, and networking has to change. And that's what NSXT is there to do. The way that it's built, it's something that's easier if you see it in the actual GUI uh, to understand because you have a lot of things like profiles and a lot of repeatable constructs in NSXT that make things very easy. And I know it sounds like gibberish right now, but once I get to showing you guys this stuff, it'll be super simple. I promise you, if you stay along with me for the ride in these videos, you will master NSXT in no time. It's really not that complicated. 
So let's get to it. I'm going to show you the interface between both uh, NSXV and NSXT just to kind of highlight the differences. But first, let me change into something a little more comfortable. Whew. That's better. All right, guys. So here's my lab. Uh, I'm going to switch over to vCenter. We're going to log into vCenter, and then we're going to take a look at NSXV. So this is NSXV. Um, you'll notice if it has popped up and you've ever looked at vCenter, you're probably saying, Mike, this is not NSXV, this is vCenter. Remember that integration I mentioned, that one-to-one -one mapping? This is where it comes into play. When you install NSXV, it actually ties in to vCenter and installs a plugin. And that plugin can be seen right here. It's labeled Networking and Security. So let's click on that and take a look. So you'll see here, we have kind of all the standard stuff. We have the ability to create logical switches. We can create NSX edges, which are ultimately our routers within NSXV. We can also do things like firewalling here. So we have all of the ability to do all of our software-defined networking right from vCenter, which is really cool and makes a lot of sense. Um, but unfortunately, again, this is just one vCenter. This doesn't really address the, the multi vCenter story. So let's take a look at what makes NSXT different. So right off the bat, you'll notice that we're logged into the NSXT manager, or logging into it, I should say, and we didn't log in directly to vCenter. This is where that decoupling comes into play. So now I'm into the NSXT manager, and one of the things I want to point out is if we go to this system tab and we head over to Fabric Compute Managers. So once you get in here, you'll see right off the bat I have what's called MGVCSA01. This is a vCenter. If I wanted to, I can add multiple vCenters in here. And what that'll do is actually pull in the inventory from those vCenters and allow me to do things like tag the VMs and place them in security policies, stretch the networks that those VMs are sitting on, all kinds of really cool stuff. So that's what I mean when I say NSXT is really built for scale because while NSXV gives you all of this functionality I just described, what it doesn't do is do it across vCenters. So that's why you need to look at NSXT if you haven't looked at it already. Regardless whether you're a customer, an engineer, uh, a competitor, if you're a competitor, you should definitely be looking at NSXT. So thanks again, everyone. Don't forget, hit subscribe, like wherever it is, somewhere down there. Make sure you hit it. You know what to do. I want to know how you guys feel about this video, if it was helpful, if it wasn't helpful. Um, like I said, this is kind of an overview. I got a lot more on the way, so look forward to that. Thanks again. Take care, everyone. Later.